Hey folks, welcome to the Almond Landscape YouTube channel and this titled video is about did we, did I at Almond Landscape here, the Hardscape Academy, did we invent geogrid entrained concrete paver edge restraint? I don't know, we'll see. But how do we prove that ever? Who knows? Um, but I really think we might be the first people who have ever used the, to use, re, to use geogrid and concrete paver edge restraint in this manner together. And we'll show you how and why and how it works and how we believe it really to be a fantastically strong system. Here we go. Now folks, imagine with me, if you will, your standard paver installation here. And this is a little demo we built with our uh, apprentice that came up from Texas here recently uh, to do one-on-one -on -one personal coaching and uh, hardscape uh, training here with us, which we talk about all sorts of different scenarios. And if you screw something up, how to fix that. That kind of stuff, really cool. But I, and we also, you might have seen, we just did a video on just traditional concrete edge, but this one we're talking about geogrid entrained concrete edge. And so here we have a piece of Unilock drive uh, drive grid, which is a triaxial geogrid. Uh, in the past, we've used uniaxial geogrid. This is probably tremendous overkill, uh, but it will definitely work. So what we're going to do is, in, in this case, and this is going to be maybe more advanced than just like a how to install pavers version. Uh, but you know we've got our base material down and what we're going to do is take a varying length of this the whole stretch of our pavers and we use this in vehicular applications or places where we feel like lawnmowers or tractors are going to cross over these things a lot um, and you're going to see how and why so if you can imagine this edging were to continue on these pavers were to continue on down through here before we've screed out our paver base imagine these 57 being all through here we're going to lay down this geogrid in here to whatever prescribed depth we feel. I believe it needs to be, and again, this is not engineered. You cannot use this uh, and claim, hey, Almond's got this figured out. What we believe it to be is uh, just a system that works for us. You'll have to figure out what works for you. But we're gonna take this geogrid and run it about 18 inches back into the paver um, main field, right, before we, lay, before we lay pavers and before we screed out our bed of number nine here. So we're gonna take that, and then we're gonna take our nines and we're gonna screed them out over top of our, our geogrid just like we normally would. So I'm gonna put this here and then we would just take this, lay our pipes out, screed this, this uh, number nine bed over, you know, one inch deep over this geogrid just like we normally would. Okay, so just pretend we're screeding that out. Again, this is just for the example's sake. And we're gonna screed that out. I'm gonna borrow some nines from here, okay? And we're gonna, you know, so that's all screeded out perfect for our paver bed, our paver bedding. All right. And then we're gonna take our pavers and lay them in here, right? Pavers installed, cool. We'll only do two in here for this example. All right, and so let's say we got them there. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this edging, as you can see here. So we're gonna take that stuff and now we're gonna do like we normally do. If you watch that video, see more about this. We're gonna take our uh, bedding material and we're gonna scrape it off of our geogrid. We're gonna pull that out of here, right? And it's generally gonna be flatter in here, you know, whatever, this is kind of a hoopy setup, but you kind of get where I'm going with this. My narcissism knows no bounds, folks. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some concrete and we're gonna borrow it. But what, we're, what we do is we're gonna take this concrete, work it up into there. They drop it on the GoPro, big dummy. But we're gonna get it built, we're gonna get it worked up into there. All right. And then we're gonna mash that stuff back down, about like that. Right. And then we're gonna take this concrete and work it in there just like we normally would. And you might get a smaller like tuck point trowel or something like that. But again, this is on a vehicular application where a car is going to be driving with. So we want this to be pretty darn sturdy. But we're going to do that and we're going to entrain this concrete right into here. And then we'll come through with a torch and burn that off or clippers. The torch is really the way to go. Um, I think that a smaller flow it's going to be ideal. But this is going to be like awesome. And so what that does is and what we believe is when and there, by the way there are uh, mechanical edging systems like this that use a piece of you know standard l bracket edging right 
and they have a piece of geogrid that wraps into that. Just what my claim to fame is, right, Britt? All you. All me, baby. First. First. If you ain't first, you're last. Oh, so anyways, so there are other systems like this that use, actually, you know, uh, you know, aluminum edging, plastic edging, whatever the case is, but we believe we're the first ones to use it concrete and trained. And so what we foresee and see this happening, and we're not engineers, we're not structural engineers, PEs, any of that stuff, but when a car, you know, again, because we want that jugrid, you know, out 18 inches or so. When a car drives over this section and it exerts load down on this and it's pushing down on these pavers, it's essentially sucking that edging, or I'm sorry, it's sucking this geogrid or pulling this geogrid back down into there. And so it's it's pulling on this edging as it does it. Instead, if this were not tied in, because I mean, that's what geogrid does. If this were a retaining wall block, it ties that retaining wall block into the mass of the hill behind it, right? And makes it one big solid cohesive mass. So the way our thinking is that, you know, cars back here, loads exerted on this, and instead of these these pavers trying to push and just blow this edging out, it's actually being restrained by the load, the vertical load on this. And again, that's where like, it'd be great to talk to an engineer to know how far back that geogrid should go. But like I said, we go about 18 inches, give or take. So that is the technique. We believe we're the only ones to do it first. Uh, and again, often duplicated or what often imitated never duplicated is that what they say but um it's something we think is really cool so when that cure sets up over a couple hours it will bring our compaction equipment in but you know again that load bearing down on it here is you know that load pulling down is also pulling on that edging and pulling on this geogrid and keeping this thing all one cohesive mass so that is our claim to pseudo fame ha 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 that's our thoughts. So, folks, that is it. World exclusive almond edging right there. Not to be confused with the motor edge. That's it. So, uh, feel free to use it. Just send your uh, compensatory checks for the use of it to P.O. Box 203, Carroll, Ohio, 43112. I like my tiny seat wall. It's way too short. It's perfect for you, though, Zeke, huh? Okay, folks. Good night from almond edge, too. There we go. High five, buddy. <laughs> So there we go, that's it folks. Have a great rest of your day, night, evening, weekend, whatever. That is part of like, you know, having humility to ask for help when you need it, be it you hire a bookkeeper, use software that helps you. You know, a handful of times in my younger career, in my first company, I had a couple of people offer to help. I, they knew they knew I was in a mess. I, you know, they could just tell I wasn't charging enough or something. And they were accountants and they offered like, hey, I, I would help you with your books or go through some things here if you need it. And I was a too proud and embarrassed to show them the train wreck that I had on my hands, which was, I didn't know what I was doing. Lord knows, you know, where that might've gone. If I actually was like, you know what? Yeah, I actually need some help. I, I don't know what the hell I'm doing to that effect. I would tell you like, don't, don't be afraid to ask for help or sort of hire it or whatever. Asking so. for help so hard, though. It is. Because usually is. you're not in a good... When you need help, you're not in a good place.